my god. You know, it started off so well with these Golden Age Seagull films. Out for Justice, The Glimmer Man, Under Siege, March for Death. And then you just shit like his The Foreigner and Ticker and The Patriot and this movie. And I don't care if it's upside down. The Foreigner, The Patriot. Foreigner piece of shit, Ticker piece of shit, Patriot piece of shit, and this piece of shit. Alpha kill pretty much shit. Sadly, between the Foreigner, this, and Out of Reach, Alpha kill was better, but it was still shitty. This. Playing Billy Ray Lansing. His real name is William. But some people call him Billy Ray. I'd rather listen to Billy Ray Cyrus's A.D. Breaky song on a repeat for a whole week and watch this fucking movie again. And that's not even hyperbole. That's not even being outrageous. That is fucking truth right there. It's directed by Po Chi Leon, who I believe did a Wesley Snipes film after this called The Detonator. Could be wrong. Of course, Sakal is a covert agent, or used to be, because he's like that in every fucking one of these directed video films. <clears throat> and he's also a survivalist. And he helps his bird who's out of a trap to make the lake better. He's in a foster program where his pen pal is a 13 year old girl. Now, let me ask you something. Don't you think it's strange that a 50-something fat guy has a 13-year-old girl as a pen pal? That could be a start for a horror movie. A 50-year-old fat guy has a 13-year-old girl as a pen pal. It's kind of creepy, only take the kind of out of it. And yeah, it's in fact pretty fucking creepy. So, and that's the plot they're going with. <clears throat> and his 13-year-old pen pal is an orphan in Poland. And ADR, which is, <clears throat> for those who don't know what ADR is, it's when they film a movie, but then it's a scene there was stuff going on, and the voice is too low, and the voice is hard to hear. People will come in and redo the voice and insert it in so you can hear it better. Sigal doesn't do that in a lot of these movies, especially his directed DVD stuff. Very apparent in this one. If we're going so far, this is the most apparent. There are some in his other ones, but this one... It's narration where he's writing to his pen pal 13 year old buddy girl and talking about how he, she's he's teaching her about secret codes and a cipher and it's very clearly not his fucking voice and this narration goes on for a fucking lot and there's other scenes where literally he's talking like this he's talking normal then hey how's it going and then, hey, how's it going? We're going to go to the shop, and then we're going to go buy something to eat here, and then everything's going to be okay. Literally in the same scene, it'll be like two different voices, Seagal and somebody. In fact, his voice double should have a fucking code credit. It should be Steven Seagal and whoever the fuck voiced him. They should have code credit. It comes up that fucking much in this movie. Sometimes I wonder if he had more dialogue than Seagal. I might, I wonder if the voice double who did the ADR had more dialogue than Seagal. Himself. So, Seagal's dealing with stuff like the company wants to silence him or wants to get rid of loose ends and go in, I think. It's not the CIA, it's the CSA. And you have this little 30 second 
kind of fight scene where he deserves a guy who hits a wall and kicks a guy and does this, tells him to turn around, and then he escapes and they turn around, he's gone. Matt Schultz is your bad guy. For those who don't know, that's the guy. He was the villain in The Transporter, the first one with Jason Statham. He was also in The Fast and Furious, and he came back for Fast Five. He plays the villain, and he's horrible. And I like Matt Schultz, but he... He sounded very deep and very wooden. He has the same kind of voice. And I'm like, what the hell are you doing, man? You did good in The Transporter, which was before this movie. Transporter was, what, 2002? 2001, 2002? This was 2004. What the fuck? So, and he's this bad guy, and he's giving kids these flowers... And you, what you find out is the orphanage is a front for human trafficking. Which I find ironic because there are some rumors say that Steven Seagal himself has been human trafficking some people to be his sluts and whores. Now whether that's true or not, I don't know. I wasn't there. But that's one of the rumors if you look it up on the internet. Again, I don't know if it's true. <coughs> I know some people don't like the film, but if you want to see a better movie with human trafficking, go see Stan Trey with Dolph Lundgren and Tony Jaa. And yeah, I know not everyone's cup of tea, but it's a hell of a lot fucking better than this. Dolph Lundgren knows his shit, unlike Steven, who at this point is just shit. And he's full of shit. That's why he's so fucking fat, because he's full of shit. Why well, he keep making fun of his weight? Because I have no respect for the guy. Every time I keep hearing about the guy, he seems like a bigger and bigger dickwad, dickweed, and dickhead. And he's never been humbled. He thinks he's back in the days of above the law, wants to do above the law too for some stupid reason. And thinks he's teen shit. Was well, yeah, he is the teen of shit. Direct to video shit. He is the teen of that. And yet wants to keep talking shit about the people like Michael J. White and Van Damme. And he's so arrogant and prickish in interviews. And he's like an unpleasant guy that I would never want to have a cold one with. I'll have a cold one with Van Damme. Or Dolph. But not Sadol. So I have no respect for the guy. I enjoy his early work. I think once in Blue Moon, hopefully I'll come across a directed video film I like. I know I like Urban Justice. But you know what? Not this shit. When you make shit like... I don't have respect for Sadol. Fuck him. So he he gets a letter saying that his pen pal will be no longer corresponding with him. He goes over to Poland. At the same time, one of the girls who's been taken tries to escape. Matt Schultz comes upon her. And later on you find out that she's been burned. But she was made to have Sadol think it was his pen pal who was burned alive. But it's not. At the same time... Matt Schultz goes to this woman who owns the orphanage who's working for them, wants to shut her up, so he takes a rose, lights it on fire, and again later on you find out that woman's been burned to death. So Dole comes back, there's these two guys in his apartment, fucks them up. He becomes friends with this little kid who is part of the orphanage. And this is what I'm talking about. He comes out, this is getting to the scene where they find the old woman burned who was burned by Matt Schultz off camera but you see a teeny bit of her remains so Dole comes out talking normal then all of a sudden you have this horrific ADR of him talking with this female cop obviously not him again his fucking voice double should have a co-credit it's that apparent at one point, the female cop gets shot in the shoulder, and Sadol beats this guy up, and he runs away, and he performs surgery on her with a knife and some heat. Get the bullet out. Right, I don't know why he didn't just take her to the fucking cops. I mean, well, yeah, to the cops, or, you know, to the hospital. But I guess it just wasn't safe for doctors to look at the bullet, just for him to do it his own fucking self. 
So Matt Schultz tells the guy who escaped Sadol's beating after the guy shot the female cop in the shoulder. When that he when he escapes, the next scene he's with Matt Schultz in this empty room. And Schultz realizes the guy fucked up. So for some reason, he makes the guy point the gun at himself. At Matt Schultz, as you say. And Matt Schultz tells the guy to shoot me. If I want to see if you can do something right, shoot me. And of course the guy goes... And then his dialogue goes... You know what the problem with my father was? He wasn't hard enough on me. End scene. What the fuck did that have to do with anything? Maybe they needed Sadol's voice double ADR to explain some more shit. It's like a scene trying to make Matt Schultz a badass of a bad guy, but it fails because he's lame as fuck. I mean, you don't have the guy. You want him to shoot you, but because he didn't shoot you, you're telling him about how your own father was wasn't hard enough on you. Yeah. Okay, calm down. Oh yeah, and the bad guy, Matt Schultz, is a fencer. Which comes back at the end of the film. He's messing with this. What the fuck did happen there? I know there's this NBC ball coming up, and for some reason, I guess Matt Schultz has the girl there and some other people for a trap, and the little girl stops and wants to eat caviar, and they let her, and she makes a code. So once it all sees it, it says it's a trap. Yeah, Sigal finds out he's in a trap by looking at a code made of caviar. I guess that's something new I haven't seen before. Sigal gets there, finds a message, leaves. He sets up a trap at this whorehouse for the bad guys. Very spiffy, expensive looking whorehouse. And the bad guys get there and... Sadol fires his shotgun. As for his shotgun, looks like he it seemed like he filled every shell with firecrackers. Because every time he shoots this huge spark like off the side, this huge sparkling. I'm like Again, did you literally fill it up with firecrackers to shoot them at? Because you know like when it comes out, you know, the discharge on the side of the shotgun is like so many sparks. He loves, I guess Sadol maybe loves Sparks. And shoots some guys. Goes out to Matt Schultz. And they're in this wide open space of architecture, all in white. And they're facing each other. And they have dialogue of when the predator becomes the prey. Incompetent filmmaking. I love how one minute Matt Schultz his face is fine. Even once the goal hits him in the face, Matt Schultz lands on the ground and he's fine. And then Sagal's double puts Matt Schultz in a headlock and ultimately is like on Matt Schultz's back and Matt Schultz hits him on on a wall, and then all of a sudden, Matt Schultz has a nosebleed and a bruise under his eye. I guess they magically appeared. And Sigal's double is struggling, and then Matt Schultz hits him in the gut, and this is Sigal's weak spot. When he hits him in the gut, Sigal's character gets dizzy. Because there's literally a point of view of his vision being fuzzy. After getting just elbow in the stomach like once or twice, like, Maybe two or three times at most. <laughs> I'm like, he got dizzy because he got elbowed in the stomach. And I, I'm not even making that up. If you watch the film, you tell me if I'm making it up. It's there. And they did this little sword fight. 
which it's okay. But the up close is them. Then when you have the wide shot, it's Sigal's double doing the sword fight, but up close is Sigal himself doing the sword fight. And it's okay at best. They come at each other, swing, Sigal kills. And not even like, oh, he slid his neck or cut his head off. No. Just goes by and then Mashell's has blood, falls to the ground. And then it cuts to Sigal's double. It's easily his double walking around the woods. So not only his voice double, but his own fucking double. She did fucking cold credits in his movies. And apparently, I guess he adopted the pen pal girl and the little boy that we've seen throughout. And the pen pal girl is talking, I guess she wrote to this female cop about how she and the little boy got adopted by Seagull. And everything's okay, and we're worth him here in the survivalist. And the bird he fixed earlier is flying. It freezes. The bird literally freezes, like over here. No, actually, it's over here. Like going this way. It free. Whatever the fuck. It freezes over here. And over here, what appears is Seagull's picture of him smiling and looking down. Like, it's literally like, like this, and actually it's like, this, no, I want to get this right, it's like, literally like this, with a needle right here, and then he starts his own human trafficking sex in the woods, and then Dolph Lundgren comes in, and kicks the girl's ass, and beats the fuck out of him and wins the day. No, actually, that's not what happens, of course, but that would make it. If that happened out of the blue, then man, this would be a damn good movie, but that doesn't happen. So instead, you get a movie that is incredibly boring, slow, tedious, shitty, huge chunks of ADR. I've said this many times before because it bears repeating. His ADR voice guy should get a co credit, as well as his double. The fight scenes are. There's really not much of any. And the action, you get a little sword fight at the end with Matt Schultz, who even he's pretty bad in the film. And I swear, maybe I'm wrong, but I swear some of his narrations was ADR from another guy. I didn't, that, that I could be wrong on, but I swear some of his fucking lines were ADR from someone else. Like when he's doing like narration and shit that they just added in after the fact. Boring plot. Yeah, out of reach is right. Keep this out of reach from you. Keep it out of reach of me, you know. I don't want to be punching a lot of things, so I can't do that. But I can take this and, you know what, I'm not going to break it because maybe one day I'll sell it to someone who wants this shit. I'm just going to look at this movie, I'm going to be like, you can f go fuck yourself, you can go suck some dick, you're a piece of shit, you're a fucking hick, now get on a stick and shove it up your fat ass. Seagull. Fuck your movie, fuck your shit. Try, at least try, but if you don't try, then you make us want to die. Fuck you. Fuck this flick.